I'm Roger Morris, I'm the Bishop of Colchester. I'm a country bumpkin, really. So uh, I quite like the name Street Pastors, because you don't get more urban than street. You know, and you talk about street cred and street culture. So it's a kind of urban, but pastor is a rural word. You know, it's about shepherding and caring for sheep. And, and I love the combination of that, that actually street pastors are, as far as I'm concerned, urban shepherds. I was having my, my hair cut one day, chatting to my hairdresser as you do. I have to say, it doesn't take a long, so, so we're not there for ages. But, um, uh, but she was talking about going out to town on a Saturday night. And I said, oh, have you come across the street pastors? And, uh, and she didn't, the name didn't register. But I said, well, they're kind of people who, who kind of look after you when you're, you know, coming out of the club and things like that. And she said, well, something did happen to me, she said. It was quite extraordinary. She said, I couldn't quite believe what happened. Uh, I'd come out of the club and I was struggling to walk in my high heels. In fact, my feet were killing me, she said. Uh, so I, I just took my shoes off and was walking along, carrying my shoes. And this, this person came up to me uh, and they said, you, you need to be careful because there's broken glass around. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? I can't put my shoes back on. And she said, you never believe what they did. She said, they reached into a rucksack and brought out a pair of flip-flops and gave them to me. And, and I put them on and I thought, well, how, how much do they want for the flip-flops? And they said, no, they're free. And she said, I just could not believe, she said, that there are people there when you need them giving you what you need and not asking anything for it. And I said, ah, that would have been a street pastor. So I think the impact that street pastors have in just very quiet ways, very unassuming ways, on the lives of thousands of people, it's a tremendous thing. Gender, it doesn't matter. Age, doesn't matter. Even infirmity, I've known uh, street pastors in motorised wheelchairs and things like that. So there are really no barriers to being involved in street pastoring. Um, you do have to make up the sleep deficit. That is, you know, one thing you have to be able to do. So it's a bit tricky if, well, if you're the pastor or if you're regularly preaching on the Sunday morning first thing or doing an eight o'clock communion or whatever. It's a bit tough if you've been out till about four or five o'clock that morning. But uh, actually, for many people, once a month or something like that, they can do that and it's fine. Um, and the street pastors I know love it. They really enjoy it. They love the camaraderie. They love working with others. Uh, they love the conversations they have uh, at really quite strange hours of the night with people uh, who are just delighted on the whole to see them and actually have some really meaningful conversations about faith, about life, about all sorts of things while they're doing it. So it's a great ministry, um, a good quality training package that goes along with it so you're equipped and resourced for it and really I can think of very few people where it would not be appropriate for them to think about this. One of, the, uh, one of the first things I did when I moved to Colchester was to get in touch with uh, the local station here in Colchester and I had a night out, a Saturday night out, uh, with some of the police officers, seeing what was happening in the nighttime economy and what was going on. And one thing that really struck me, and in fact it's repeated in so many encounters with the police, is the way that they see the street pastors as an absolutely essential part of the care for the nighttime economy. And they talk about their collaboration with them as colleagues in terms of how they meet the, the needs to provide a safe place for people who are enjoying the nighttime uh, and enjoying the town at that time of night. So I think there's, there's a real sense that street pastors have become a, a firm fixture in the minds of all those who are planning for what happens in our towns and city uh, during the night time. Uh, I'm also conscious that amongst those in uh, the County Council 
Uh, street pastoring has become something where they look upon it as a brilliant example of how the voluntary sector engage with professionals delivering together uh, the kinds of things that our communities need. And, and for that, it's often in meetings that I attend talked about as the example of how that, that engagement with the voluntary sector can work well. In some parts of the country, street pastors have, uh, have extended their remit in different forms. So there are school pastors who particularly look after people from that, that bit from, from coming out of school through to getting home safely. Uh, I was at a, a national consultation about uh, work in some of our coastal towns and people were talking about beach pastors, which I thought sounded very exciting. Um, so there are all sorts of possibilities depending on the environment and where the needs are. So I think, I think the idea of street pastors, that non-judgmental way of serving people and caring for people and ensuring their safety, can actually be applied to a number of different circumstances and situations. And I think provides us with a, just an excellent model of, of how we as Christians can practically show God's love for other people.